Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I use a slide to make ambient music. Let's go. So first of all, let me start off by saying I do not consider myself a slide player, not even a little bit. Uh, if you want to be inspired by slide players, I would highly recommend you check out guys like Derek Trucks, uh, maybe Joey Landreth, Ariel Posen. Myself, I'm just a slide survivor. I use this thing to make ambient voicings a little bit different to get tones out of uh, they are a little more voice-like and a little more angelic in this sort of twangy way. I really do appreciate how a slide can totally change the voice of an instrument like a guitar. Now with that said, in the last couple of months I've really dedicated myself to learning how to play slide in a way that can contribute to the kind of music and the kind of stuff that I get called for. So I figured let me give you some tips and tricks that have helped me to mature my slide guitar playing. Tip number one. Find a slide that you're comfortable with and that actually fits your finger. Now in the past and even in other videos you've seen me use different slides. I used to use a very oversized one. I found that using a smaller slide that fits right onto my pinky has really been very comfortable for me. And so now I've developed this uh, sort of pinky technique. Find a slide that fits. Number two, and this is probably the thing that changed my life, and that was my right hand technique. I didn't really think it made much of a difference, but it actually does. And I've developed this technique, which is, I guess has been dubbed as the cage system for your right hand. You're using your first finger here to actually play and pluck the notes, but you're using your other finger, such as your thumb and your uh, middle and the rest, to mute the surrounding string. Tip number three actually was very interesting to me as well, and it turned out that I was holding the slide onto the guitar all wrong. Now first, you wanna make sure that you're actually not pressing onto the strings themselves. You don't play slide guitar the way you would play normal guitar where you're actually pressing down on the fret, but indeed, you're actually just literally hovering over and just sliding on the string versus pressing down. So you kinda wanna be delicate with your left hand. Another thing is you wanna sort of keep your hand technique perfect in terms of straight. Now, you learn this when you're young, coming up as a guitarist, you wanna keep your thumb behind the neck just like that, nice and flat so that it forces your hand to go um, very, very classical style training, so it forces your hand to not really touch the bottom frets like that. That's how your slide should basically be touching every string, and also your pinky, the tip of your pinky should sort of be the focal point to which note you're playing, so if it's, you're playing on the high E string, but your pinky sort of touching the low E string, then you're not really focusing on that note and you have a larger chance of fretting out when it comes to slide. The next technique that, that, that I picked up was actually using, again, I know we're using the cage system on the right hand, but using your left hand fingers to play right behind the slide. That actually forces you to block off any string noise, but at the same time, it makes you play correctly because if you're having your fingers come up just like this, you're gonna find that your technique is gonna go off really quick. You're gonna find yourself edging up just the way I'm doing now with the slide and you're gonna fret out really, really fast. So by keeping your fingers sort of following the note behind it, it's forcing you to keep that technique proper and at the same time you're muting off any excess noise that might occur that you don't want. So again, I'm gonna use my surrounding fingers on my right hand to block off any uh, strings that I'm not playing and then I'm gonna help with my left hand mute sort of delicately behind the slide, following the slide so that I can mute off any kind of string. Now 
Now, of course, it does help to have a guitar that's set up for slide playing. This particular guitar is actually set up where the action is relatively high. Um, I also have probably thicker gauge strings on here and I'm tuned down to open C. However, I still use all of these same techniques when I'm playing in standard tuning. Now, I will admit this, when I'm playing a guitar that has very low action, I tend to fret out a lot more. So if you are looking to incorporate slide playing, you do have to make some adjustments to your guitar. You don't want to have your action super low so that you're fretting out at any given moment. It's important to give yourself a little bit of space between the string and the fret so that you can easily slide through and glide through with your slide. I've been able to incorporate this, these same techniques using standard tuning, standard strings on a standard setup guitar, but it certainly is more fun when you have a guitar that's actually dedicated to slide playing. I hope this video has helped you. I really wish someone would have told me some of these tricks and tips when I started playing guitar because I would have incorporated slide playing in my guitar playing a long, long time ago. And I just kind of feel foolish. I never got to do it until now. Please let me know in the comment section if you've been struggling playing slide guitar like I was for so long. Let me know if some of my tips and tricks have helped you sort of think of slide playing a little bit differently. You know the deal. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and hit that bell icon so you know every single time I upload a video. Thank you so much again for watching, and until next time.